Right, so uh, here, uh, so I am with uh, the lecture 10 slide sets. Uh, so it is uh, on arrays, right? So we are going to talk about arrays uh, in C. Uh, not only in C language, uh, so we uh, have to deal with arrays, but in other languages like in Java, you will learn uh, in uh, the next semester. And then uh, in Python, uh, I don't know whether you have discussed uh, arrays in Python, but uh, you, I think you are familiar with the list, right? In Python, so it is related, right? List are similar data uh, type, uh, data structure. Uh, so here uh, we are going to check how it is different from uh, Python list. And then uh, even in Python, uh, there are arrays, so we can do some comparisons. So let's talk about arrays. So arrays or list, right? All these uh, <coughs> data uh, types, I would say data types are used to store a collection of data, not just one data, uh, a collection of data can be stored using uh, arrays or list. Uh, I mean, in this discussion, we are not uh, concentrate on list, right? But uh, since you are familiar with list, so that's why I mentioned that uh, like uh, the, the purpose of uh, arrays and list are the same, right? Uh, so previously, I, I mentioned that uh, when we talk about variables, Right. The variables, variables are used to store one value in uh, our memory, right? So one value. So based on uh, that value, right? We uh, reserve a location in the memory. Right. So depending on the size of uh, the data type, depending on the type, uh, we reserve relevant memory uh, area. Right. Like, uh, for example, like int A. So that means in the memory, memory location would be served, uh, reserved uh, for to store an integer, right? The size would be uh, in a general architecture, size would be for four byte. Four byte memory area would be reserved for this variable. So in, uh, using this variable, we can store just one value, one value. If you need uh, multiple values, you may need multiple variables. If you want to store multiple values, you need multiple variables, right? So that's a one option. So if you, have multiple variables, you can uh, use say A, B, C, D. E. So likewise, you may need a multiple variables. Uh, so however, uh, it is not flexible. 
if we have four values, that's fine. If we have 100 values, if you have 1,000 values to be stored. So in such cases, right? If uh, we are going to store a set of value which are related to each other, right? Uh, which are same data type, which are related to each other, right? In such cases, we have an alternative to use arrays. So array is, uh, I would say, it is like a variable, right? But with one name, we can give a name to the array. We can give a name like A uh, as in uh, here, right? We can give a name. Under this name, we can store multiple values, collection of values under this name. With one variable name, we can store multiple variables in arrays. Right? Uh, but there's a limitation. So one limitation in, in C language, or oh, oh, in uh, most of the languages, uh, when we are using arrays, we cannot store different types of values, different type uh, of values. So we have to use, we have to store, we can store only one type of uh, values. If it could be int, if it is int, all the values should be integer, integer values. If it is char, all the values that we store should be char, right? Only one data type. The first value is one type, the second value is one type. That's not possible in arrays. That's not possible. Right, so we'll come to that later, right? Somehow, so the idea here is multiple values can be stored under one name. So usually uh, these multiple values, multiple related values, right? I would say multiple related. Related, related to each other, right? So for example, right? Uh, they, uh, so, uh, so you're going to have uh, your exams uh, maybe uh, in uh, next month or so, right? Uh, so there, um, suppose uh, I'm going to use uh, C program to store uh, or analyze or, or do something with your marks, right? Right. So then, uh, so how many students are there? Basically, uh, 163 or something, huh? right? So I have 163 students' marks. A student's mark, suppose, uh, right, one value, 
and the second student's mark right I, i'll put values uh, right don't worry you are not going to get these marks right like <laughs> okay so suppose uh, first student got 17 Student got uh, 65. Third student got 88. So likewise, so I have marks of 163 students. So these marks are related because these are marks of the fifth batch students. in uh, that they are taken for uh, for uh, fundamentals of program so these marks are related to each other in this case actually i can use an array to store this so these are uh, same data type and then uh, related to each other right so then i can use arrays suppose uh, so i have something like this right uh, so i have uh, marks for assignment 1 right assignment 1 i have marks right like uh, so likewise i have assignment 1 marks and then uh, for some students i have assignment 2 marks right i cannot put them together in most of the cases because uh, these are not uh, like suppose uh, okay okay let let me okay so the first student i have marks for assignment 1 second student i have marks for uh, assignment 2 so likewise different data right it would be not practical to use an array or oh, in this case right okay so then uh, suppose uh, if i am uh, collecting your email addresses or your contact details if i ask you to enter your contact details right then uh, some of you give me your uh, mobile phone number right some of you give me uh, your email address. some of you have given uh, numbers uh, some of you give, have given um, email address and then some of you have given your uh, home address right like different types of data which are not directly related in such cases it would be very difficult to use arrays arrays would be not good option here likewise uh, if so we have same type related data we can use arrays related collection of data we can use arrays <coughs> right So in uh, Python, 
So you have list Python, you have list, and in uh, Python you have arrays as well. I don't know whether you have worked with arrays. Uh, have you learned arrays in Python? In Python? So I have seen in your uh, uh, curriculum or uh, in your syllabus so that a list are there. Okay. I mean, uh, in your in your syllabus, uh, arrays are included in uh, levels. Arrays are there, right? Okay. <clears throat> Did you learn arrays in uh, A-levels? I'm asking again. Yes or no? Okay, right, okay. So yes, so you know arrays, right? Okay. Uh, so it is there. So then uh, can anyone tell me uh, what is the main difference between Python list and arrays? So let, let me open a uh, Jupyter Notebook. Can anyone tell me just one difference between arrays and uh, List. Yeah, so list uh, the main uh, difference would be a uh, list can uh, store multiple, like uh, different types, different data types. Array can contain only the same type of data. Okay. So uh, if I just uh, uh, I hope you can see uh, the screen. Right, like a list can be uh, defined like this, and then uh, if you want to print the list, so you can uh, directly give the list like this. Okay, but uh, if you're using arrays, uh, so you have to import array module and then, uh, yeah. Uh, array module. So then uh, if you want to access array, so then uh, you may need uh,
a loop, uh, loop like this. Yeah, like this. So you can directly print a list, but uh, if you want to print uh, array, you have to use uh, a loop, access one at a time, right? Uh, and then uh, multiple data type can be, for example, like uh, here, so you can have, or you can uh, go for like uh, another list. See, so no problem. List can hold multiple data type. That type would be another list as well. Right. So in uh, that case, you would find that uh, like uh, list are very flexible. So list are very flexible, right? So lists are very flexible. So in most of the cases, you would prefer list, right? But uh, here we are not going to talk about list. We are going to talk about arrays, right? But uh, actually next year, like when in your third semester, we will discuss the difference between list and arrays in uh, data structures and algorithms. And algorithms. So we are going to talk about the difference between these two. Actually, uh, so I'm teaching uh, data structures and algorithms for your senior batch. Uh, I don't know, like it is a coincident, but um, so this uh, like this morning, I uh, discuss them uh, the list, the difference between list and arrays. I, I talked about that in the morning. So today, <laughs> in the afternoon, I'm talking about arrays for your batch, right? So mainly, like arrays are like list are having many uh, flexibilities. Flexible means actually flexibility needs cost. It has a cost. Cost is the performance. Performance wise arrays are better. And list will go up. We got the facilities. If you are getting more facilities, not in uh, just list, but from any uh, uh, module, any uh, function, right? So if you are getting more facilities, that means internally some uh, uh, processing is involved. Can may may flexibility handle karana at the length internally a cut here uh tau vadipura processing uh karana veno. So they need uh, some uh, processing, internal processing. Uh, sometimes they they are optimized, but still uh the performance wise uh right, uh the arrays would be uh better. In most of the cases, so that is our data in uh, for four months. Right. So uh, we are not going to talk about uh, much on this, right? But uh, here, let's go to the main discussion on arrays. How arrays can be used in C language? Let's talk about that. So arrays in C, an array is a data structure 
that can store sequential collection of elements of the same type. Sequential collection as a sequence, one uh, come, uh, they come one after the other as a sequence. Right? So all array consists of consecutive memory locations. Actually, these values, these values, when they, when they are stored in memory, uh, they use consecutive memory locations. Longer memory locations, power ticker, no may values ticker, that. Make it a pass a maker. It can longer memory location. In memory, like uh, in previous case, for a variable, so the uh, we reserve a memory uh, location, but uh, for a for an array, so we reserve chunk of memory. The longer memory locations set the reserve for an array. Okay. All array consists of consecutive memory location. Array can be thought of as a collection of variables of the same type. You can consider it as a collection of variables. Collection of variables, but we don't have different names for those variables. We are going with just one name, one name for all these. So you can think of as uh, uh, I don't know, like usually in uh, uh, Sri Lankan weddings, uh, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, I think tables like in a wedding, suppose we have a wedding party, right? Like there are tables in the wedding hall. Usually these tables are, in most of the cases, like Sri Lankan, like uh, the usual weddings, Tables are not reserved with names. But in some weddings, uh, like there's a name, right? For each location, there's a name. This is for Jamila, this is for uh, Senaka, likewise. So we have name is there, right? There's a uh, husband and wife, so they have locations like this. So mostly in uh, like uh, weddings in other countries, not in India, like uh, India. So uh, their weddings are really big. So I don't know whether they can do that. But uh, for example, like uh, in my ex experience, uh, like I have experience in Japan. So they have that, like uh, the name. Uh, like uh, in India. I mean, in Sri Lanka, if you can do that, that would be uh, really, really good. Uh, so uh, you are now uh, young, younger people. Like uh, I, I think, like you be getting married uh, in uh, uh, several years, right? I don't know whether you have already married. Uh, <laughs> some of you may have married. I don't know. It could happen, right? Uh, so anyhow, like uh, you'll have your wedding in your wedding party. So if you can name uh, the seats, if you can reserve the seats with the names, that would be very uh, good. That would be very organized part. 
because like i i have been to some weddings <laughs> like uh, so first uh, i i go there and then uh, i um, uh, find uh, some vacant place vacant uh, uh, table uh, so then uh, maybe with my wife so i go there and then i so we sit and we have our uh, welcome drink and uh, we eat something <laughs> and then uh, uh, buffet is open there i go to the buffet uh, so me and my wife go to the buffet and uh, we uh, uh, get some food and then when we come back uh, <laughs> that place is taken by someone else so they are eating there so then we we are uh, so we uh, we are lost and so we don't know where to sit so then we find some other vacant place and we sit there like it it's happening in you know, many weddings so if you if you have been to wedding so you have experience that i'm i'm pretty sure it, it has happened right but if you reserve with a name then uh, it won't happen it's difficult i know it's difficult like uh, sri lankan weddings are like organizing weddings are very difficult but if you can do to keep that in mind so that would be yeah. right so okay okay L let's go back to the uh, <laughs> our main uh, topic uh, so our main topic is not weddings but uh, arrays right okay uh, yeah so uh, you could do that that would be really really nice so then uh, people know that uh, okay i have a reserved place right uh, so uh, try to do that when you do uh, when you uh, take your uh, baby right uh, right okay so so we have names at each place right sometimes right instead of doing that right instead of doing that if you can name a table right for example right like if you if i know uh, like uh, from uh, so suppose uh, uh, you are uh, working at uh, virtusa so after graduating so you are working at virtusa come back so then uh, you are inviting uh, about uh, 12 people from virtusa right so instead of naming all uh, places you can just name virtusa right like you put a board there and then uh, people from virtusa so they can uh, sit there others won't be uh coming to that place so, so these two tables are reserved for virtual shopping so arrays are something like that right instead of uh naming individual locations we name a collection of locations with one name right when you reserve seats uh, in uh, a concert sometimes you have seen right so this area is for uh, this people this area is for teachers uh, this area is for uh, lecturers uh, this area is for the staff likewise uh, so you have seen that right arrays are something like that actually array can be thought as a collection of variable of the same type okay so before using arrays in c language we have to declare it. we have to declare the array like uh, in variables when we are using variables we have to declare the variable right sometimes uh, at the same time we can assign the value right we assign a value but 
before that anyway we have to declare we declare but we can do that declaration and assignment at the same uh, in the same line so variables are actually they are uh, sorry uh, arrays are variables actually arrays kiyanne variables vargayak ma thamai because of that arrays has to be declared arrays has to be declared we can do the declaration and assignment at the same time so let's talk about uh, that later right anyway first do the declaration when declaring an array there is a one addition to that declaring variable is uh, simple right so we give the type and the name so we give the data type and the name but in uh, when we are declaring array there is one addition to that so we have to define the size of the array so size of the array has to be mentioned with within brackets right type and the variable name or the array name and then in front of that we have to use uh, brackets within brackets we have to give the size so this is an example integer type then the name of the array and then the size we have to give the size then based on that size it will reserve a memory chunk right if it is size 10 uh, the data type integer right so then integer takes four bytes four bytes and then 40 bytes 4 into 10 40 bytes memory chunk would be reserved for the array With this name, for example, here, with that name, for numbers, forty bytes would be reserved. But actually, I mean, uh, in uh, uh, the real situation. so this is what's happening actually uh, this is something additional right so if you don't understand this so if you don't uh, uh, get this clearly don't worry so array variable right for example in this case int number 10 right in that case number variable to be created Uh, there is a question. What is the limit to the array size in C? There is no such limitation actually. So you can, uh, but uh, physically there would be a limitation because uh, you uh, uh, there is a limit in your memory. RAM has a limit, right? Based on that, there could be a limit, but uh, uh, like generally. array uh, size uh, does not have a uh, limit uh, right right so number so i was telling uh, so actually what this is what happened right number number right this variable so this is a variable right right oh sorry uh, let's let's start with uh, general variable suppose we i have a general variable int a 
like this. So then a variable, right? So we, if we assign the value, that values go to goes to this variable. this variable would store that value, right? In memory, so we have reserved area, right? This value would go in there. But in uh, arrays case, right, in arrays, Right. Int numbers, that's the name of the array, and then I give the size. Right. When we do that, right, usually. We have the variable of numbers. And then array would be created with 10 or 10 items, array would be created. But this variable holds the memory address of the first element, right? Memory addresses are in a hexadecimal number, right? Right? Hexadecimal number So this hexadecimal number would be stored here. Not the array itself. And may we may array kela kyanet variables. Have a variable like our array ka dagani in the array ka puhari memory kevenatana ka hadala e hadaputana memory address secretin on palavini item make a memory address e ka store karagana a variable. Samani him I will. So usually that's what happened. So uh, numbers. So this this variable does not hold uh, or does not keep the array itself. So array would be created or array would be uh, the, the memory area would be reserved somewhere else in the memory, like ten items, uh, uh, memory chunk would be reserved. And then the first elements, memory address would be stored here, right? So we are going to talk about this uh, when we uh, talk pointers. In pointers, we will talk about this, huh? right? So, uh, so I'm just giving you that this is actually what's happened, right? So you don't have to uh, worry much on that, huh? right? Just think that uh, right. like we declare this so then in uh, memory area for 10 items would be reserved that's all still we don't have any items uh, any values there but uh, with declaration memory would be reserved Right, declaration. This is declaration. Okay. So we have to give the size. That's all. The array size indicates the number of elements in the array. Once the array is declared, the size cannot be changed. This is very important. Size cannot be changed. Once you declare the array, then later on, if you think, okay, so 10 is not enough, so I need another five items, that cannot be done, right? You have to carefully think 
the size of the array beforehand, and then you have to decide the size. So otherwise, you'll be in trouble because uh, the size cannot be changed. Arrays are immutable. You cannot change it later. Once the memory is reserved, it is reserved forever. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you cannot change that. You cannot change that. Immutable. Tenkoro tenkara, yeah. Hadu hadu ay vinas karan na ba. Size se ke vinas karan na ba. Right. When array is declared, a collection of memory locations are reserved with the name of the array. With the name of the array collection of memory locations are reserved. So this is uh, for, 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 for uh, easiness. So, so we can go with this, but actually what's happening was slightly different as I told you, right? The memory location is stored with the name in a variable, right? Okay. Right, so at this point, no values are assigned. So no values are assigned the array is empty. However, the array elements may contain garbage values. Even though we think that these uh, uh, locations are empty, uh, but uh, they could contain, they may contain garbage values. Some values that were stored previously someone else or by us, right? So those could be there. Can you monohari then calling the memory ka kiri ka hambela am use when on it? Ito monohari am calling use which a memory kota sa kapi me array ka dhuwa ke leta? Ito kota e calling me memory ke daapu values ti anna polo am garbage, ito rapi me kata gano again, garbage values. And you know that how do you have to use in the hair? I pay dark values, Tama him of the right? So garbage values could be there, but when you are working with uh, in, in C, when you are working with C, garbage value would be there, but when you are working with Java or oh, most of the modern languages, so uh, they have they are garbage collectors, right. So uh, the memory area that uh, the language is using, if they have some unused values, they would be deleted and uh, clean, right? So garbage collectors are there, but in C, garbage collection is not there, right? So the, in, in your array, garbage values would be there at the beginning before you enter anywhere. So there's a question. Uh, can we declare an array without a size given? Uh, yes, there's a possibility, but not just like not like uh, without giving the size like this. Uh, so usually in uh, General case, this is not possible. This is not possible. However, uh, there's a one way that you can do that. I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you uh, when you are declaring and when you're assigning value directly, then this is possible. Array ka C file leke nine karat garbage values to ke hima mo kiya So if you have in memory, like uh, in memory, they don't care about C or any other, like the language is not uh, relevant to the memory. If we put something in the memory, that could be there, that could remain. 
there if we don't remove right if we or any other program does not remove that that value would be there in memory right as i told you in uh, java so they have garbage collectors and uh, in uh, the modern uh, ids that we are using for c language right uh, so they they are using some uh, mechanisms to reserve uh, the memory uh special memory areas for uh the programs right but still uh, that garbage values uh, can be there uh, for example like uh, when you are uh, running a program right when you are running a program so you create a, an array and you put some values and then later on even after you uh, so suppose if you uh, uh, if you are not, not using that array anymore but still those values would be there in the memory right that could happen okay. right so array element identification normal variables can be identified using their names so array element identity so here the problem is so we define the array right so i will draw the array i'll draw the array like this huh? okay so 10 values are there where 10 uh, locations are there, right? Okay, so. So array is having to be a reserved 10 elements. Reserved it for 10 elements. So then, if you want to access an individual elements, sixth element, if you want to access sixth element, how can we do that? So now we have just one name for all these items. So we have one name. one name for a collection of items, collection of values. How can we access an individual item? So anyone? How can we access? Yes, so we are using index. We are using index numbers, right? So we have one name, then with that name, we can use index number. So like uh, in your school, right? 
in your school or even in a university. So one class, one class is uh, considered as a collection of books, one collection. It is like an array, right? In, in that class, to identify individual students, we use index numbers, right? So usually we, they have index numbers in the schools. So in most of the cases, in schools, you have index numbers like uh, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Right? Similarly, the, uh, to identify individual uh, elements in uh, within the array, we use indices. But here, we start with zero. Index start with zero. There's a reason for this starting with zero, right? So we are going to learn that uh, reason uh, when we talk about uh, uh, pointers. When we, have, uh, when we uh, talk about pointers, uh, we, we are going to learn uh, the reason here, uh, starting with zero. Any, uh, If anyone know that, right? So, um, so do you do you know why we start with zero instead of using one? Right? We don't say this is index one. We say it is index zero. What is the reason? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine. So, what is the reason that we are using zero? Right, okay. So, uh, uh, think about that. But anyway, we are going to learn that in uh, later on uh, in a uh, few weeks, right? Uh, but uh, now, if I am going to explain that, uh, it will take time. But uh, so you can you can individually think about that. Right? So anyway, for now, let's uh, let's go with. We start with zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so. On. Usually, the last index is always uh, size of the array minus one. Last index is always size minus one. Right? Size second the high na size second ekka kadu gram thame anti me index ekka. So with these indices, so how to access that? So we use numbers, uh, the name of the variable or the array, and then we can use index. If I want to access this one, numbers can array ke pass to any element. Numbers in bracket so brackets are used in two places when we work with arrays uh, brackets are used in two places what are those in declaration Declaration in declaration uh, to give the size. Size of the array. Then uh, sorry, uh, brackets are used. Uh, brackets are used to place. Two. 
uh, first uh, brackets are used in declaration to give the size. Uh, second brackets are used to access values using index. Right. right, array elements are you. Normal variables can be identified using their names. Read and write operations can be done via uh, name of the variable. So we have normal variable. Then we assign value, right? The value we, uh, variable is uh, referred using the name. And then if you want to print the value, we use the name, right? If you want to assign the value of that variable into a, another variable, so we can use name of the variable. You can do some uh, operations on that name, name of the variable. So how this can be achieved using uh, arrays? So arrays, we have indices, right? An array index is used when working with individual elements. Array index is a sequential number which indicates the position of the particular element. It indicates the position, right? Index start with zero. First element of the array is index with zero. The last element the index became the size of the array minus one. Yeah. So we talked about these things, right? Size of the array is nine in this case. The last index is size minus one, eight. Right. So then using index, we can identify array elements. If we want to access third element, uh, fourth element with index three, then we use the name of the array and then If you want to deal with the fourth element of index three of the above array, following syntax can be used. Right. As I told you, so there are two places, right? Brackets are used in two places, declaration as well as uh, when accessing uh, values. So if you see brackets, the value inside this bracket would be the size or it could be index. So how do you know the difference? Right? So if I say my program, so if I say numbers 10, So what is this? What is this 10? Is it the size or is it the index? What is the difference? How do you know the difference?
is it size or is it index in this case what is it is it size or is it index some says uh, size some say most of us uh, most of the students say size uh, sorry index okay one who's uh, saying index right so why it is not size? Why did you decide it is index? Exactly, yeah. So usually if it is size, if it is size, then size is given, size is given when in the declaration, only in the declaration, size is given only in the declaration. In declaration, type is also mentioned. Type is also mentioned. But here, type is not given. So if I say, Int first ten. Then this is size. If I don't have this, then this has to be the index. This has to be index. So if you see the variable uh, array name with brackets and a number within the bracket without a type in front of it. So that means this is index. But if you see any type in front of that, any type, could be any type, right? Like char or any type. So then this is the size. Okay. Well, array declaration type has been given. But here type has not given, so this is. We are accessing, so this is the index. Right. Then after declaration, after declaration, so we have to initialize array. Initialization means assigning values. Assigning values. Usually, even in variable, we declare a variable, we assign values. Right? Assignment can be divided into two. First, we call initialization. Or general assignment. Assign. So initialization means assigning value for the first time. Initial value is given. Initial. Initial means uh, uh, the first beginning. Initialization means giving, assigning the first values. 
So after that, we can assign other values, right? We can assign values, uh, for example, like general variable int a, a declare, and then a is assigned to 10, right? So we can initialize here, declaration and initialization together. So then later on, in somewhere in the program, we can assign 50, for example. Right. So then a variable had 10. And then with this one, we assign 50 to so then the previous value would be deleted and new value would be added. New value would be override the previous value. So this is the initialization. We don't call this is initialization. This is just assigning a value. This is again assigning a value, but for the first time. That's why it is special. It is called initialization. Right. So initialization. Array initialization is a process of assigning values to the array elements. There are two initialization methods. Initialization uh, in, initialize one element at a time, initialize whole array at once. So we can initialize one element at a time. It is very easy, right? So if we have our number array, right? Numbers, right? Uh, int numbers, we declare array. And then I can initialize one at a time. Zero index can be assigned with any value, right? So suppose I want to put 78 in the zero index. So now, uh, if I draw the array like this, zero, one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so. On. So if I do this, this value would be assigned to zero. So then numbers. I give number index. So that value would be assigned in index one. So likewise, one at a time, I can assign values. Right? Initialize one element at a time. Then initialize all array at once. Let's see how it can be done. Right? Elements can be initialized one at a time using name of the array and the index of the element. 
we assign value one at a time. All array can be initialized at once when array is declared. When uh, once array is declared, at the same time, so we can do that like this. So we can give the whole array values, right? First value, second value, third value, and so on. All the values at once using braces. See? Within braces, separated by commas, we can give the value. All array can be given. Right. So instead of doing this, we can Braces, so we can give the values. I'll give different values, huh? right? Uh, 78, 90, and so on, right? Comma, 90, 25, 13, 120, And so all the values, right? Right. All nine. So then in array, right? So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so the first value would be added to zero index, second value would be added to index one, third value would be added to this one. 90, 25, 13, 120, and so on. The so next values would be added. Initialize the array at once. So the 12 goes here. In this example, 12 goes here, 34 goes here, 13 goes here, and so on. Last one. So when uh, the array is initialized, in this way, the size declaration is optional. You don't have to uh, declare the size. You don't have to mention the size. Because we are giving the array itself. So then automatically size would be uh, identified. So how many items here? 10 items. So based on that size would be identified. You don't have to mention this. You can, you can mention uh, the size but it's not mandatory, it's optional. You can just give empty right. So you can just give empty brackets here. Right. And there are several variants and special cases of initializing all array at once, right? So 
suppose if you are doing this if you are giving the size and if you are doing this then all array would be assigned with zeros and then you, you are giving the size in this case you uh, like size is uh, mandatory yeah? mandatory and then just empty right still it will store all zeros right Suppose if you declare like size 10 and then one, it'll just add one. One at uh, zero, uh, zero index and the others would be filled with zeros. At size second, the high kila dila, ikka value vika kudra dunno, a value vika da gano etana, anit values bindu da. So if you give several values, the size is 10, but you are giving only four values. Those four values would be added and then other values would be filled with zeros. Right. So these are some variants of initialized. Right. So the accessing array elements, uh, it can be done using index array. Uh, using index right so if you want to assign a array element you can use array name and index this array name and then index the value of that index would be assigned to this variable this is a different variable regular variable so you, uh, if you want to add two values index number three and index number four of numbers array if you want to add those values so then you can do that uh, as this and then assign it to uh, another way you can print array elements using this like numbers index three can print that using print this like this. Okay. So these are some examples. Uh, so I have an array with four elements, right? So I'm printing each element number one, number two, number numbers two, numbers three, likewise. So I print each element. And then I'm finding the average of these values. How to find the average of these values? I add index zero, index one, index two, and index, sorry, this has to be index four, uh, sorry, index three, index three, so I add these values and then divided by four. There are four values. My values are to be like average. So average could be so divided by four. It could be a, a value with a decimal point. So I'm using float. float. So that's why I, I have divided it using this. 4.0 to be converted into the flow and then it is printed like this Right, so let me open uh, code blocks. Right, 
So what is the difference between uh, dividing by 4 and 4.0? I mean, it is the same. The idea is the same, but when it is used in C language, right? 4.0, right? So, uh, uh, as you can understand, this is an integer array. So the data type of these values are integer. They are integers. So we are, adding four integer values here. So the answer or the results of this part, this addition part would be integer. It is an integer. But when we divide that by four, just four without uh, point zero, suppose we are dividing it by four. Four is integer again. Right? This one would be divided by four. And the answer would be four. Answer would be, uh, sorry, answer would be, or result would be integer type. If it is integer type, then it will just consider, right? suppose, uh, the results of addition would be 70 uh, for example 30 results of addition would be 30 right if we divided that by 4 right We are expecting like this is integer, this is integer. The result is then given in an inti in integer. So we are expecting to have uh, the answer as 3.25. Right? Something like this. But actually, this part would be eliminated. The answer would be given as an integer. Answer would be given as an integer. But if you put, if we put 4.0 here, then this would be integer this would be float because it has decimal point C. Then actually internally, this part is also converted into float and then the answer would be taken as a float. Results would be taken as a float. Results would be taken as a float. So it's missing decimal points would be given in the answer. Right. So that's why we use that. So here. So be careful when you are working with multiple data types. So here, integer but if it is integer here then the results would be assumed as an integer result ki integer ekak vidiyata thama etakota salaka then integer ekak vidiyata denawa e integer ekak convert karana float ekata metanadi but still the answer would be here 3 decimal points would be eliminated at this point then that value would be assigned to this Three, only three would be assigned to that one. But then, because it's a float, it would be added 3.0. 3.0 would be the answer. But actually, but like you can you can add the, the, these values and check the real value. Yeah. Okay. 
<clears throat> right. So I'm uh, creating new project, right? Uh, right, okay. So let me copy this one. So right. Okay. Uh, So here it is, it has to be three. Huh? So see, uh, see this one, huh? this, uh, if I put four, right? It is a weird answer here. What would be the reason? So garbage value, it could be garbage value. So I have, index one, two, three, four, right? Zero, one, two, three. I put values like this, right? So what are the values? 12, 34, 12, 34, 13, 56, okay? So then when I'm adding, index zero, index one, index two, index four. So there is no index four here, index four. Here. But it will go, it will check the next memory location next to this. If I have a garbage value this, right? So add this and this and this and not this, but this garbage value would be added. So that's why we have a weird answer here, right? Okay, so I'm going to cor correct that, okay? Right. So, right. So the average is 28.75, right? So if I use, Four. Yeah. Let's see. See, twenty-eight. It's different. So this seven point five is elim eliminated. If we, if I use just four because uh, the results would be integer, it is considered as an integer. But if this is given as a float, float value, then the results would be assumed as a float. So this part would be con converted into a float. Okay, right. Right, so here uh, there are only four values. Suppose I have 
50 values like this, 50 values like this. Then if I uh, print them like this, would be not reliable, not very reliable. Suppose, uh, okay. let's uh, talk about just printing this, right? If there are 50 values, printing one at a time like this would be not reliable. So instead of doing that, so we can use loops. Right. For example, we can use four loops. Right. Int i start with zero, and then i goes up to uh, four. Suppose right. i then inside this. Instead of using index here, instead of that, we can use i, variable i here. So then this is iterating, i start with zero, then i goes up to four. Zero, one, two, three, up to four, not four. Incremented one at a time. Like every time I takes values zero, one, two, three. So if we use I as the index, so then we can access all these things. First, it will print index zero, and then when I is one, it will print uh, this value and so on. So we can print and let's see. See, it's printing 12, 34, 13, 56. Instead of using index numbers, I use i because i is changing from 0 to 3. Right, so there's a question. Array index, if you print array index four, what would be the result? It would be error or it would be, it would uh, print that garbage value. Let's see, let's see. Uh, here, up to four, up to four. Index four, you got the print color now. Index zero, one, two, three the next value would be print. Let's see uh, what is printing. Ah, ah. So that value is four. Now that value is four. <laughs> okay. Uh, it could be for again, uh, but uh, if you do some other things and uh, later on, if you print it, it would be different values. Like in this case, it will be for again. See? Because I am printing as a as an integer, but actually I don't know what is the type, what's the value there, right? If I print it as uh, integer, it'll just show four. Right. Okay. 
Okay, so two loops can be used like this. See, loops are used frequently when working with arrays. When printing elements of whole array, it would be done using for loop. You can print in values, and then when you are initializing same value to arrays, right? you can assign values using arrays as well. Yeah, array goes from zero to the size. Right? Usually, this this is the size of the array, i plus plus. So numbers i assigned with A value 100 plus i. For example, the first value would be 101, the next value would be 102, and so on. So, like this. So, these are two examples that we can print or we can assign values. We can assign values. Using loops. Right. So these are some examples. And again, uh, when uh, you are declaring functions, as any other variables, an array can be passed as an argument in a function. Right. Arrays can be used as parameters. Formal parameters can be declared as a size or an unsized array. Right. Suppose this is a function. We can give arrays as parameters. When you are giving parameters, you uh, you can specify the size, or you can just without the size you can specify that it is an array. Type has to be given, and then the array name, and then just empty brackets can be given. Right. So in this example, so we have an array, right? So then we have a function, other function, get sum. In that, we are giving an array, integer array, and then another variable, integer variable. So that array can be used here. ARR that array can be using. So get sum, we give the array, just array. Array ka parameter uh, argument ka pithir then the bulong array. So we are going to talk about these uh, examples uh, later on, right? Right. So then, actually, uh, so we have multi-dimensional arrays. I'm not going to talk about multi-dimensional array now. Uh, in the next uh, practical session, I'm going to talk about that. Right. Uh, okay. So that's all uh, we can do uh, with the time. Uh, so, any questions before uh, leaving today? So, if you have any questions. Any questions?
Okay, right. So, uh, okay. Uh, for the group project, actually, uh, so you are uh, actually we have another two weeks, right? Uh, oh, maybe uh, maximum three weeks of uh, this semester. Uh, so officially that has to be the end of the assignment. So however, uh, you are not going to have the exam soon after that. So you will have a one week break and then after that you will start the next semester. Next semester. So in that case, actually I can give you several other weeks before the exam, right? Several, there would be several other weeks. So you can take that time as well, right? You can take that time uh, to complete your project, right? So, uh, so I will, I will uh, let you know exact uh, time, but I mean, officially it has to be the end of this month, end of this month. But as I told you, so I can give you more time uh, until uh, the first semester examination, until the first semester examination. So first semester examination, is, uh, as I remember, like on uh, March, right? End of February or March. Exam online or offline, uh, still I don't know. Still I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, it would be decided based on uh, the situation at that time. So if it is uh, online, you will have uh, maybe three hour examination paper. But if it is just uh, two, uh, online, so you will get a two hour uh, paper, online uh, examination paper. Any other questions related to do arrays and all? So uh, we need to have uh, an additional uh, exercise or uh, laboratory because uh, Friday it is a holiday, so we cannot have the regular uh, lab exercise. Uh, uh, so instead of that, so I'm going to have, I'm going to do additional uh, or extra session. Mm. Uh, um, if possible tomorrow, I don't know whether you have free time tomorrow or uh, Tuesday. So let me know. Let me know. Uh, so when is good for you? What time is good for you? Tomorrow or uh, Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Coming Tuesday. Right. Okay, so uh, please, uh, the representative, uh, just let me know what time would be uh, good, what day and what time would be good for you. Hita karana kulwa neta, Tuesday karana kulwa me pay deka ka session ya pay deka mounat kama me pay kamar kudro nat kama me tiro me pota pota pya.
Okay, so that's all. Uh, yeah, so I will I will uh, share the past papers with you uh, on LMS. Uh, so don't worry about that. Right. Okay. So if you don't have any questions, uh, so we can uh, conclude the today's uh, session. Uh, so I'll upload uh, these uh, lecture notes and then uh, the videos, uh, and uh, so you can follow that. Uh, so uh, second semester start before the exam. Uh, as I know, yes, yes, that's how. Uh, uh, based on the uh, academic calendar. So that's how it is uh, done. But I mean, it is uh, planned, it has planned. As I, as I uh, observe, right? right. Uh, so you will have several weeks of the second semester and then you will have the examination like you, you will have uh, definitely you will have some uh, time in between uh, the semester and the examination right you will have uh, uh, like uh, uh, one week or some time to study study leave there would be study leave right before the exam exam calling study leave Study leave का तीनों इधर examination में का अतर में दत वो कटी तो तीनों हमें three days तीन ना पुरु right can we come to the university for the second semester uh, still I don't know it it's again it depends on the uh, situation because last time uh, like uh, fourth year students were at the university for their practicals, but then uh, uh, several students were, uh, but uh, they, uh, several students got a positive for COVID-19 uh, and then uh, uh, we had to stop that. And it's based on the situation, so it will uh, be done. Uh, I don't remember exactly the date for the vacation because of the vacation for you and uh, other batches would be slightly different, maybe one week or some, a uh, few days. So I don't remember exactly. It would be end of this month or beginning of next uh, month. Like uh, for you, end of this month, as I remember. I'm not sure 100%, but... You have to check. So Monday is it a holiday? Right. So yeah, it is. Uh, it is a holiday. I mean, I'm okay. So holidays are like <laughs> if we can have uh, uh, lectures on holidays, uh, it's fine by me. But. Uh, Officially, it's a holiday, so officially we cannot have lectures. That's the thing. Right, so let me know. Let me know, right? Uh, free time. Okay. Right, okay, so that's all. Uh, so uh, have a nice week. Uh, see you soon. Stay safe.